Mmm, it's a fresh outdoor air. Yeah, gotta love it. Especially in these days of uh, nasty COVID viruses. Unless you have allergy to outdoor pollens. Either way, today's topic is how to measure indoor and outdoor air quality. Now, while we can't measure allergens or viruses, we can measure other things that are related to health, like uh, particulates, uh, CO2, and volatile gases. Now, indoor CO2 is particularly relevant to viruses. This is the, it reflects how much respiration has occurred. The more people you have, the smaller the space, the less the ventilation, um, the more CO2 you have, and the more exposure to viruses you could have. Last year I did a video on how we measure particle counts in the air with a kitchen in our kitchen so that we could turn our stove fan on and off as we successfully or unsuccessfully cook things. That project used a nifty particle sensor from Adafruit that measured how much smoke or particles are in the air. I've since replicated that sensor so I now have one in addition to the kitchen I have one outside and in our bedroom. In addition I've added the VOC or volatile chemical sensor and a CO2 sensor. This is the outdoor sensor. It's running on the Raspberry Pi that is also doing our aircraft detection that I mentioned in a video a couple months ago. And this is our kitchen sensor that I showed last year. Uh, since added this VOC sensor, volatile chemical sensor, it's an $18 gas detector and from it you can calculate a equivalent CO2 measurement. Now that's based under the assumption that volatile chemicals produced by humans is proportional to the exhaled CO2. I'll show some plots later on that this is not a very accurate way to measure CO2. So our bedroom Raspberry Pi with sensors attached is over here. Normally it's occluded by these two lovely critters, but they kindly stepped aside so I can show you the sensors. That's the same setup we had before with the particle sensor there. Um, this one also has a microphone attached. That's that so we can do the noise detection and count how much barking and snoring and coughing and sneezing is going on. The previous video on that. Um, that's an older wireless tag sensor I had for measuring temperature and humidity. And then these are the three new sensors I have set up. This is the same volatile gas sensor we showed you in the kitchen and outside. That's a $18 sensor. This is a $19 sensor. Also measures volatile gases, but also measures temperature, humidity, and pressure. And over here we have the fancy CO2 sensor. It's quite a bit more expensive at $80, but it measures CO2 a lot more accurately. It has a infrared LED at this end and a detector at uh, this end. It has a filter on it that's tuned to the same wavelength that CO2 absorbs. So the resulting intensity of, that it detects of that infrared light is proportional to the amount of CO2 present. Now, all three of these sensors send their data wirelessly via Wi-Fi to MQTT, and which our house then digests. So this is the node red code that collects that data. You can see the incoming MQTT data for the bedroom, the outdoor sensor, and the kitchen sensor. Like it's converted from JSON format and passed directly to InfluxDB, which we can then plot with Graphena. I'll show you that in a minute. In addition, we take the AQI metric, which is a standardized air quality index. You'll hear that quoted a lot during the forest fires. Below 50 is good, above 100 is, is getting bad. And we will uh, send that to a node red dashboard and you see we have that for all three sensors. So if I switch to the dashboard, th these are the dashboards that I use on various tablets through the house. You can see the AQI for indoor, bedroom, and outdoor. We also have the raw data, which is the three micron particle count numbers. 
and those are roughly proportional to the AQI. For the outdoor data, we also collect data from a website that publishes AQI data from other sensors around the world. This one's coming from Birmingham Airport, and so every 15 minutes we go collect that data. You can see that reflected here with this AQI for internet. So it's showing 21, whereas my local sensor is showing 25. And inside, we have fewer particles than we do outside. For the kitchen sensor, I showed this in a previous video, we also will control the stove fan and turn it on if the particle count gets too high and off once the air is cleared up. We can do other things with this air quality reading. For example, if I switch to my heating and cooling tab, I can show you uh, this green section here. Uh, every 60 minutes, we will check that air quality index and we'll also look at the sensors for the various slider windows. And if we see that the air quality outside is bad and one of the windows is open, we'll send a message to the house speakers to close the windows. That's similar to what we do here where we're checking temperatures. If it's hot outside and cold inside and the windows are open, we'll, we'll say, please close the windows, it's hot out and if it's, or if it's the other way around. If it, for example, in the summer, if it's cold outside and hot inside, it says, uh, please open the windows. So here's an example of the CO2 measurements for the bedroom. And we're starting at six o'clock here. And we can see when we go to bed, as you would expect, the CO2 in the bedroom rises pretty quickly because there's two of us breathing. So these absolute numbers probably aren't correct. Normally the CO2 it should be around 400, but the relative differences here looks right. We can see we go from 270 to 350. And then that's roughly constant. We get up around eight and it doesn't change too much. Uh, but then when the furnace fan comes on to warm up the house, that's, I'll click that on here, that's this lower line. You can see that the CO2 in the bedroom it's mixed in with some fresh air from the rest of the house and it dropped back down to a normal daytime level and stays there until we go to bed again the next night. Now comparing that to the eCO2 metric, that would be the equivalent CO2 from the $20 sensor as opposed to the CO2 metric from the $80 sensor. We can see there is some correlation. When we go to bed, the eCO2 number also rises, but you can see there's a lot more variance in that eCO2 number. Some very dramatic peaks. It shows it was cleared out even before we got up. So I wouldn't put a lot of credence into that number. Basically that number, <laughs> my conclusion is what that's really measuring is flatulence, <laughs> gas from human digestion. I learned that humans on average pass gas about 20 times a day for a total of several liters. Most of the time it doesn't smell so you don't notice it. So as you see these peaks here, I'm pretty sure that's one or both of us passing gas. That's not a bad metric for determining what the air quality in a room is because if you're roughly passing gas throughout the day at the same amount, then you can use that in the same way you would CO2 to measure how fresh the air is. But as you can see here, it's not a very consistent metric. Uh, you do pass gas more at night than you do during the day, but not consistently. The other thing of interest here is looking at the particle count data for that same time period. You can see because the furnace fan is running, we have a pretty effective air purifier hooked up to it. During the day when the fan is running, we have a very low particle count. Uh, it's way down below 100. When that fan goes off, then the uh, dust starts float, uh, floating around the house again and we get up to uh, 1,000 or so at night. And then when the furnace fan goes on again, you can see it drops dramatically back down to 100. Here you can see, you could probably guess, we did some cooking and the particle count was way up to uh, 3,000. Even without the furnace fan on, it drops fairly quickly as it disperses. Uh, but when the fan has happened to go on to heat the house up again at four o'clock in the afternoon, it dropped dramatically and quickly back down to that sub 100 level. Comparing that to the volatile chemicals, you can see that there is some correlation when we're cooking both particles and chemicals get emitted into the air, but it's not always a direct correlation. Also interesting to note here is comparing the particle count in the kitchen versus the particle count in the bedroom. You can see that even without the fan on, the smoke from the kitchen, which was here at about two o'clock, 
made its way into the bedroom in 20 minutes or so. Not as much smoke, but still it dissipates pervasively throughout the house. And then once again, once that furnace fan comes on, it gets cleared up in both rooms very really quickly. So that's the ins and outs of air at our house. I hope you found something useful there. Thanks for watching. Till next time.